age-related factors. When we review sleep, similar to the other areas in um, this course, lifespan considerations, we want to tune into what's happening with different age groups. Um, children need to learn to sleep alone, um, and they may need to get up to have night feedings, um, or they may have trouble going to sleep, especially toddlers may suffer from night tears. Teenagers um, have an increased need for sleep because of their growth spurt, um, and school and their social needs may impact as well on their sleep pattern. And uh, young boys, um, as they are entering uh, puberty, will have nocturnal emissions, and that's important also for nurses and healthcare providers to make sure that um, boys understand what's going on with their bodies during that time. Other age-related factors for adults, pregnancy may impact on sleep, caring for children and or the elderly may also impact on um, sleep. Our jobs, um, especially nurses who work different shifts, and menopause may also impact on sleep as well. In the elderly, many medications may affect sleep rest pattern. Um, if I have congestive heart failure or difficulty breathing, also referred to as orthopnea, I'm going to need to sit up and catch my breath with severe congestive heart failure. Um, I may not be sleeping well because I'm worried more about my breathing. Uh, getting up to go to the bathroom may be because I'm on medications that cause me to go to the bathroom. If I suffer from depression and if I have pain, I may not sleep well. across the life span again a review this is also reviewed in your textbook uh, newborns sleep several hours 16 to 18 infants 14 to 15 hours toddlers 12 to 14 hours preschool 11 to 13 hours school age 10 to 11 hours teens 9 to 10 hours adults 7 to 9 hours and older adults, seven to nine hours. So the geriatric age or the older adult, the critical thing to keep in mind is that they will awaken more often and will have more difficulty falling back to sleep. Um, stage four of um, their sleep cycle is decreased or relatively absent. So it is advantageous to assist older adults with nap periods. Um, also, those who suffer um, Dementia may have what we call sundowners phenomena, sundowners phenomena, meaning that as uh, daylight is ending, they will start becoming more confused, disoriented. Okay, other factors that affect sleep. Illness, the environment, our lifestyle, our stress, um, our diet, our motivation, and certain medications may also affect sleep. Okay, so examples. Sedative hypnotics may interfere with stage 3 and stage 4 sleep. Diuretics may cause patients to need to go to the bathroom during the night. The use of narcotic analgesics may help for pain, but may suppress the REM cycle and cause nighttime awakenings. Tranquilizers may also interfere with REM sleep. Antidepressants may also interfere with REM sleep. Nicotine and caffeine may have, may have stimulate, stimulant effects, and that definitely can happen, especially right before taking before you go to bed. Beta blockers may affect um, patients with having nightmares or insomnia. And alcohol, even though alcohol may tend to make us sleepy, alcohol can affect your REM sleep and thus can cause nightmares and usually disrupt sleep. So as much as many society would think that alcohol would help us go to sleep. Sometimes it, it, it's a deterrent to get a good night's sleep. And if you have questions going back to the physiology of sleep, 
NREM and REM are reviewed in your kosher readings, so you can go back and look at that as well. So the stages of both NREM and NREM are necessary for our sleep cycle. Okay, and then some sleep disorders. We have primary and secondary disorders. With some sleep disorders such as insomnia, narcolepsy, and sleep apnea, many nurses will be caring for patients and we have what's called sleep centers in many of the hospitals now where patients will be sleep deprived and then come in and actually be connected to an EKG and EEG machine to study their brainwave activity during sleep. Um, and we have now what's called different kinds of sleep apnea. We have obstructive sleep apnea, central or mixed sleep apnea, and um, mixed sleep apnea and so they can have some corrective surgery, structural surgery of their, um, the back of their throat um, to open that area. Sometimes it's the use of what we call a CPAP machine to assist them if they are diagnosed with sleep apnea. Other secondary disorders that may impact, as we had said, depression, alcoholism, someone who suffers from Alzheimer's dementia, Parkinson's disease, thyroid disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and arthritis. Our job as nurses, when we're going to assess patients with sleep deprivation, we're going to obtain a sleep history. So part of your assessment data will include evaluating their sleep pattern, their sleep rituals, any medications that they're on that may affect sleep, um, what's going on in their environment, and any changes that have occurred. Your functional health pattern, when you look at that, which is in your course manual, you'll see specific questions on um, asking these kinds of assessment data questions. Um, obtaining a sleep diary. You may suggest that the patient go home and do a sleep diary for a couple days. Partner interview. If, if there is a partner in the room witnessing how someone sleeps, many times that's how sleep apnea is diagnosed. Um, doing a physical exam, diagnostic studies may be prescribed, and the electroencephalogram, the electroocular exam, and the EMG will be specific tests to measure brainwave activity and what's going on physiologically um, to make a diagnosis of either sleep apnea or problems with night tears or whatever. Okay, and then in addition, we're going to ask, you know, what time do patients sleep, how many hours they sleep, episodes of wakefulness, and use of medications and or sleeping medications. I can't sleep at night sometimes Lay there in my bed Thoughts and doubts Besiege my head Feelings like ghosts Haunted Surreal I barely breathe When they appear